Are you having a good time in Kentucky? Are we taking good care of you? Outstanding. I tell you, we are blessed. I've had occasion just even in the moments leading up to this moment uh, to meet some of the people that are here. We have truck drivers here from Mississippi. We have single moms from here in Kentucky. We have bourbon makers from here in Kentucky. We have winemakers from California. Uh, we have uh, cricket farmers from Illinois. We have people who have found themselves here in this moment, in this place, for one reason, and that is because you have taken time to celebrate the greatness of America. I look at the video that we just saw. I don't know how you could help but be moved by this. I thought about as I stood backstage as this particular forum began to take place, we opened with a pledge of allegiance. We pledged our allegiance to one nation under God, indivisible. We talked about that as we have heard others speak. We sing our national anthem. We sing about the land of the free in the home of the brave. We had an invocation where we're able to pray unapologetically and unfearfully in the name of Jesus. How blessed we are. How blessed we are to be Americans. How blessed we are to have freedom and liberty. Let us not forget the fact that these things did not come freely. I was last night at a dinner with a number of Medal of Honor winners. I shouldn't say winner because that's often a word that's used incorrectly, as I just did. They're recipients. They're individuals who sacrificed, but they were able to come home. They were some who did not receive this award and this recognition posthumously. There were also at this dinner a number of gold, far, gold Star family members, mothers who've lost sons, fathers, sisters, and brothers. You've heard it said often, but freedom is not free. The freedom that we saw in this video, the freedom that has been discussed from this very stage, the freedom that is under attack, the very liberties, the right to keep and bear arms, the fact that that shall not be infringed, these things are under attack, these things that we take for granted, that our Founding Fathers codified into the Second Amendment. This is not something that we should take lightly. This is not a game. I hope you understand this. I wonder what brought you here. Maybe it was the idea that you would be surrounded by other people who believe as you believe for a period of time. Perhaps it was so that you could see the individual that will be the next President of the United States. Perhaps it was so that you could hear those that would inspire you in some way, shape, or form. But I hope you came here because you believe in the greatness of America. I hope you're willing to fight for the greatness of America. I'm a military veteran, and I'll tell you, this room is full of military veterans. And like myself, there are a number of you who served with men who have died, whose children have grown up without a father. It better be for something. There has been a tremendous sacrifice that has been made. And I'll tell you, it is the Second Amendment, and you know this. I'd be preaching to the choir if I pledged to you that I would defend this because you know it's true based on my life and the things that I stand for personally. But I'll tell you, we know that this is what preserves our way of life, the greatness of America, the sacrifice that has been made, the fact that one and a half million Americans since the inception of this nation have laid their lives down so that we can gather here freely, speak freely, pray freely, not fear for our lives as we leave this place. 99% of the world that has ever lived or will ever live will never appreciate the degree of freedom that we have at this moment, at this time, in America. I recently, I recently returned from Europe, and I don't mean to disparage some of the other countries, some of whom we're allies with, but I'll tell you, Europe is, is crumbling in some respects. The liberties, the freedom, the degree of regulation and suffocation of government, the overreach, the encroachment, not only on their right to bear arms, but on so many individual liberties and freedoms. It's suffocating that continent. The world is being suffocated. 
We are being suffocated even in this nation. This is why these elections matter. My challenge to you is I ask you why you are here. I hope it's because you want a better America. But my question to you is how badly do you want a better America? How badly do you really want it? Because our founding fathers pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. That wasn't a bumper sticker. They weren't trying to get elected on that. Every one of them gave some or all of those things. If there is not within those of us that are gathered here, if there is not within us some modicum of willingness to sacrifice to that degree, to some, something with, with within us that is willing to give even some semblance of that degree of sacrifice, then I would submit to you that we don't deserve a better America. But we do deserve a better America, and we owe it to our children, and that is going to require sacrifice of us. And that sacrifice is going to come in the form of many things, some simple and some difficult. There are some among you in this room that will have in your lifetime an expectation, an opportunity for you to step up like no one else has stepped up that you're aware of, and yet history will call upon you. But for some of us, it is simple things. It's the fact that it's not enough just to go to the polls this November. What is at stake? You've heard about it. You've seen the videos. You've heard the speakers. You've heard what it will mean to our right to keep and bear arms, to our Supreme Court on so many other issues, to who uses what bathrooms, to fill in the blank. We are under assault from regulation and from liberal ideology, and we are the ones that have to stand in the gap. This is our time. There is, a verse, there is a verse in scriptures about the, the watchman on the wall. The watchman on the wall. It doesn't do any good if we see what's coming and we don't sound the alarm. If we don't sound the trumpet, shame on us. We see what's coming. You are here because you recognize the encroachment. You recognize what is coming. You recognize the threat. But what are you going to do about it? How badly do you want a better America? It's important that we vote, yes, but it's important that you bring one, three, five, ten, and fifty people with you. Social media is a powerful tool. Use it. Use Facebook, use Twitter, use whatever it is that you use to communicate with people, leading up to to be informed, but especially in the days immediately prior to the elections in November, turn people out to vote. This is not a game. We have got to stop being so apathetic. It is the greatest threat that we face. You look at the sacrifice that was made by the people who founded this nation. They came across in rickety boats. They risk their lives for the very freedom that we do take for granted so often. You look at the people who, in Valley Forge, if they were lucky enough to even have shoes, they ate them in the winter of 1776 to keep from, sat, from starving to death. Do you want it that badly? Do we want it as badly as the man who I met last night and his colleagues who, when they hit the beaches of Omaha in Utah Beach, these beaches in France, they knew they wouldn't get three, 10, 20 yards up the beach before many or all of them would fall, and many of them did. And they stepped over the bodies of their friends so that the next wave could get a little farther up the beach. They wanted it. Do we want it that badly? It is our time. We owe it to them. We owe it to the next generation. We owe it to ourselves to stand united. The state motto in Kentucky is united we stand, divided we fall. We must stand united against the tyranny and the hypocrisy and the corruption that comes from career fake politicians like Hillary Clinton. Stand firm. United. United we stand, divided we fall. This is our obligation. It is my challenge to you. Take ownership of this. A government of and by and for the people is only as good as we, the people, allow it to be. It is our right, it is our privilege, it is our responsibility to go to the polls and to take ownership of this great nation. Do not let the candle go out on our watch. May God bless you. May God continue to shed his grace on the United States of America. Thank you.